welcome to this episode of Happy in 15. So today I'm joined by Mikko Juola. Uh, and Mikko is, is from a company called Data Content Manager, or your app is called Data Content Manager. And the topic of today is how data quality in service now impacts experience. And we can go through in, in different ways of experience, but hey, welcome. Happy thank to you. have you here. Thank you, thank you. Thanks and for the uh, invitation. Yeah, yeah. And because data quality many times is something that people talk about. Many times our customers, when they start their journey to start understanding experience data, we of course then tie it into their operational data. And many times there's data that is not there, mm-hmm. or it's wrong, or they say, mm, can we trust it? So that's why I thought this topic is is very relevant to our listeners. Uh, with you, we decided that let's kind of try it in, in three different ways. So we talk about from the end user's perspective, how does it affect their experiences from the agent's perspective, then also on kind of IT management team level, like decision making, how, how to use that. And then maybe, you know, we see what else what else we, we invent as well. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, if we start from end users, how do you see data quality kind of, you know, related to experience from end users point of view? Well, one, one thing is that um, end users like that they are kind of known, that yes. the service providers know their customers and users. And if you think about like a service portal yep. where you log in and, and try to order something mm-hmm. or request something, uh, it's better if they know who you are, what services you already have, so you don't have to kind of type everything again every time you want something. So that's definitely a big part of the experience when it's yeah. kind of fluid and easy yeah. and everything like that. Yeah, and I think that's something that, that we also see in, in our data. We have some we, co- we have these things called factors and it's like I had to explain my case several times. Mm. So kind of related to what you just said about knowing the end user. Exactly. And knowing like, okay, Pasi has this kind of a laptop and uh, he has subscribed to these services. So you already know what the issue might be or what it's related to even when the person hasn't said anything. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah, true. And yeah, and many times kind of, uh, you know, you can't really have a self-service portal if your data is whatever it is. Because if you have policies that hey, for yeah. these sales guys, we have this kind of things and, and for developers, we have this kind of things. So yeah. yeah, exactly. Then the portal is just an email form. True, true, yeah. yes, <laughs> yeah. Um, what about agents? Because I think that's where it really starts to get, like you, you mentioned when we started that bad data can be very expensive. So yeah. this really probably comes when you actually then the agent starts their work and they start to work on something related to end users. So Yeah, th- th- there is one study that basically says that it costs 10 times more to work on a task if the incoming data is incomplete. And that kind of relates to the portal as well. That yeah. uh, if you submit a ticket to the service desk and it doesn't have all the information that the agent needs, then they have to kind of get back to the customer or ask from a colleague or something, and that immediately takes time, uh, yeah. much more time than was kind of planned. Yeah. So that's kind of uh, how it sums up that you need to do some things you're not supposed to do if the data is not yeah. correct in yeah. the beginning. What is usually the kind of data that that customers are missing or is in a bad shape in your experience? Well, yeah, go- good question. But it, it does relate to this laptop example yeah. uh, that uh, you, you submit a ticket, that there's something wrong with my device, and then the agent has to ask it, okay, what is that device? <laughs> or wh- what are you talking about? Yeah. Uh, wi- which kind of model is it? And if they know all this already beforehand, then they can do the analysis, or maybe they know more about it already based on their CMDP that yeah. There are some updates required or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what else uh, uh, do you think that from from uh, agents perspective when they do their work, what does what usually happens? What what can good data quality help them with? Any, anything more specific? Well, uh, another example could be related to kind of more complicated issues that you you have to do some like root cause analysis or things like that, and when you Okay, let's say that somebody submits a ticket about uh, like SAP mm. and maybe the ticket includes the information about this business application. But then if the agent has to 
kind of ask more from the owners or managers, they, the application should have the information about the owners yeah, or have the information about the support groups and kind of who to assign the ticket to. And uh, if you don't know these things, then you end up maybe assigning it to a wrong person. Yeah. How do you think it, it relates to the agent's experience about service now if the data is bad? Do you think that it kind of starts making them feel that there's something wrong with the tool? Yeah, definitely. And and that applies to the end users as well. Yeah. That this is a crappy portal <laughs> if if you if you can't use it well or if it, if it's not working well and quite often it's related to data. Yeah. But that definitely applies to agents yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh what kind of mechanisms can can you then apply to to make sure that the data would be, you know, in better shape for the agents? Well, first of all, you would need to understand what data is Im- important and then focus on that yeah. uh, because there is usually so much data uh, in the platform that you cannot get everything right. True. So you have to start from the things that matter and then kind of do it like one step at a time, try to improve all the time. Uh, so it's not really like a one project that you do and then you're complete. Yeah. But uh, yeah. constant work. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. I mean, kind of what matters. And I think that's what our customers see. There has been some, you know, they have maybe fixed some of those data so that maybe the agents can work, some of the the most critical so that the end users can order from the portal. But then comes understanding, so where they, where are like the end users struggling? So if you don't have then data filled by the agents, you know, it doesn't get automatically filled into the tickets. It doesn't get into into our tool where you kind of relate operational data to experience data. Mm. You can't really say what we should focus on. So if we kind of go to, to kind of decision making and, and reporting, uh, what, what do you see the kind of the, the problems there with, with if data quality is not in, in good shape? Well, y- you, you can't make the right decisions. <laughs> <laughs> you're, uh, you're making decisions based on kind of incomplete information. Yeah. And uh, the kind of examples that uh, you also told us earlier that if your kind of reporting is showing like empty value yeah. then <laughs> how do you kind of dig into it yeah. <laughs> but if it's showing that you have issues in this particular location then at least you can take a look yeah <laughs> yeah and dig deeper yeah so. yeah true yeah because I, i think it's 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 also kind of like this this circle that unless you are reporting You mm. don't understand that you have a bad data. Yeah. And then when you do it, it gets priority that now we need to fix it. Yeah, the data has to be used. Like, uh, of course, in reporting, but uh, also when I said that uh, you have to focus on things that matter. Yeah. So focus on that data that is kind of most used. Yeah. Because yeah. there you there you see the uh, the impact also. Mm. That if you, l- well, y- if you think about these business applications and you, you may have like thousand of them. Yeah. Uh, you're not recording tickets to thousand applications every day. Yeah. So there is maybe a subset that you should focus first and make sure that all the kind of most important uh, applications have the owners, etc. Yeah. And then work from there. Cool. Yeah. And and then of course the trend nowadays is then that hey now let's let's uh, create chatbots and let's create automation. Oh yes. What is the most important thing to automate anything or? <laughs> <laughs> well. Um, o- automation is 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 really interesting topic because some people see it as some magic that mm. makes things happen and uh, and uh, of course you can automate things to kind of happen faster and process things faster. But if you have bad data, then you just make mistakes faster. <laughs> <laughs> True. And uh, end up having a bigger mess in the end. Yeah, because uh, I think one of the underrated things that agents actually do and IT workers, the the humans, is that they they can kind of work with bad data. They can, yeah. The humans can still like make the assumption that okay, it's about this, it's about that. But then when we get to, to machine learning, AI, these kind of trendy topics, they can't work with bad data. And that's also the reason why it costs ten times more. Yes. Because they can do it, but yeah. it just takes time. Yeah. But uh If you have l- well, like even simple things like an, again in the portal, you can order something yeah. that requires an approval. Yeah. If you don't know who 
who to, who to ask for the approval, then the kind of workflow stops. True. Somebody true. has to do something about exactly. it. Exactly. And a human could actually just say, okay, we know that that guy owns this process, so I'll just ask from him. Yeah. But when a machine should do this, yeah. they really need good quality data. Yeah, or if there is like a typo somewhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or <laughs> invalid phone number, whatever. Yeah. Hey, then how does data content manager, how does it practically help the service now admins, the process people to with the data quality? Well, it basically introduces a systematic way to manage data in the platform so that you can do it in small steps, yeah. but have kind of measurements in place to understand where are the gaps and where are the kind of problem areas. So the, the key there is really that first you kind of try to decide or define who is responsible for data in different areas, and then those people can better understand what they should do about it. Yeah. Is it a big project that you do once and then data is excellent quality, or is it some continuous thing that you do small things all the time? Yeah, it's definitely continuous thing. And, and even like, okay, you could think of kind of starting the work as a project, Yeah. but even that should be quite small. True. Because then you kind of get the hang of it and then it's easier to expand when you know how things work. Yeah, because I think that's sometimes a little bit scary because with IT teams, we know that they are just like all the time firefighting. There's so many yeah. things on the go. So taking something that feels big and laborious, exactly. so it's kind of don't have time to stop to fix anything, you just keep doing the same thing over and over. So, and we we actually uh, get a lot of kind of comments from from clients or prospects that uh, we may not be mature enough to do this type of mm. work. Mm. And well, <laughs> uh, you could disagree quite a lot with that because that's the problem. It, it doesn't have to be like a big thing that you need to do or that you need to be on a certain level, but you just need to start. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah, I mean, that, that really ties into, well, to our IT experience management framework where we have like a progression. Mm. It's kind of, well, if you, like, let's, I, I want to learn to play piano. You can't just start playing piano. Yeah. You need to start understanding first. Oh, right, well, I'll just like every day I'll do something a little bit on it or learn a little language or, yes. or whatever your thing is, like learn a keeping pull-up in CrossFit. Mm. You first need to do a pull-up. Yeah, and then you start doing something to get you towards it. So that's I think the progression is sometimes something that people or, or don't understand. That you can start very easily, yes. and I think that that really ties into data quality management as well. And what wh- what I said about uh, that you should focus on data that is being used. Yeah, the same applies here that you need to use this data that you get from the data quality reporting or the data you get from the experience metrics. True. And once you start to collect them, then you can start to use them and then you learn how to use them and kind of do it better yeah. in the future. Yeah, cool. So, hey, if uh, our listeners want to learn more, so I know that you have an ebook on your on your website that tells more. Tell me a little bit more about it and I'll put a link on the on the show notes. Yes, so we, we released an ebook called uh, like CSDM, Recipe for Success. And the CSDM is the Common Service Data Model for ServiceNow. Yeah. Basically, the best practice on how to kind of organize your CMDB and services, and we wrote a book about h- kind of how to get things started, what you should have in the beginning to to have a successful journey. Cool, that that sounds really good because I think also the the practical like you know things how to how to do it uh, nowadays people maybe have time to read a little bit by themselves and want to learn a little bit by themselves, so they can go to your website, download that one, and then you know if they want to learn more then just have a bit of contact with you guys. Yeah, yeah. contact us or or also take a look at our blog. We've been yeah. publishing a lot of these kind of how-to articles cool. on different topics. So yeah. yeah. What about your product itself? It's available on ServiceNow Store or? Yes, it's cool. available on ServiceNow Store. It's yeah. certified by ServiceNow. Yeah. So very safe and easy to take into use. Awesome. But hey, uh, thanks for your time, Mikko. It was uh, nice to have uh, this short chat with you. And uh, as we usually say in the end, so stay safe and stay happy.